In this video, we're going to be looking at graphing inequalities, and in specific, graphing quadratic inequalities. Now, in previous videos, we looked at finding key features of quadratics, your x-intercepts, y-intercepts, your um, vertex, all of those good things. So we're going to use some of those to help us graph here. But the difference is, instead of having an equal sign, now we have a, either a less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. For this example, I'm going to have a less than. Okay, so let's find our key features so that we can graph it very quickly. The vertex, we can find by finding x equals negative b over 2a. That's going to be negative 6 over 2 times 1, which gives me a negative 3. We can find the y value that goes with it by plugging that in to our function. So negative 3 squared plus 6 times negative 3 plus 8. Let me make sure I don't make any arithmetic mistakes. That would be 9 minus 18 plus 8. It gives me a negative 1. So my vertex is at the point negative 3, negative 1. The other easy point to find is our y-intercept. If we remember to find the y-intercept, you let x be 0. So remember what happens when I plug in 0 for each of those x's. Both of these terms go away, and you're left with just 8. So that's going to be the point 0, 8. The next key feature to find so that we can graph is our x-intercepts. We find that by letting y be 0, which means we're going to take that function and set it equal to 0. And I think this one factors. Let's check it. We know that these two have to multiply together to give me x squared, so we have x and x. These two are going to multiply together to give me an 8, but add to be 6. So that's going to be x plus 4 and x plus 2. So when we set each of the factors equal to 0, to solve them, x plus 4 equals 0 would give me a solution of x equals negative 4. x plus 2 equals 0 would give me a solution of x equals negative 2. So I would have the points negative 4, 0, and negative 2, 0. So with these key features, I can make my graph. Now, since this is an inequality, we have to think about a couple of other things. When you have an inequality, your boundary line is either going to be a solid line or a dashed or dotted line. So let's think about when it's going to be a solid line and when it would be a dashed line. Well, a solid line would in mean that we're including that boundary line as part of our solution set. So the symbol that means we're going to include something would be that it was or equal to. Dashed means that we're going really, really close to but not including that boundary line. So that would have to be when it's not equal to. So if we look back at this problem, our boundary line is going to be a dashed line. So let's go ahead and sketch that boundary line. My y-axis and my x-axis. I'm going to go ahead and plot that y-intercept. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I need to plot my vertex. 1, 2, 3, negative 3, negative 1. My x-intercepts are both negative. Here's negative 4, and here's negative 2. Now remember, this is supposed to be a dashed or dotted line. So, however you want to do it. I kind of mixed it together there. Now we decide where to shade. Now one method to figure out where, 
which part of the graph gets shaded, whether it's outside or inside, is to choose a point that's not on our boundary line and plug it in. So let's do that method first. Let's see, what's a really good, easy point to plug in? Well, what about the origin, the point zero, zero? So if we plug in zero, zero, our inequality was y is less than x squared plus 6x plus 8. I'll plug in zero for y and zero for all the x's, which is just going to leave me with the 8. Is zero less than 8? Yes. So that point zero, zero is part of my solution set. It's a yes. So if we're including that point, that means I'm going to include all of these points on this side of the graph. Now another way to figure out which side to shade is that this one was a y, all the y values that are less than this function. So if we think about it as the vertex is that, that main point, if we were graphing all the points less than that, we're going to be graphing down here. Now what would change if I change that to a y is greater than or equal to? Well, one thing that's going to change is that our graph is going to be a solid line. But if we change it to a greater than or equal to, we would shade above the vertex. Now, that's nice when it's opening up, but what about one that opens down? So let's use just a regular negative x squared, just our basic parent function flipped over. That graph would be in one opening down. Because it's or equal to, it's going to be a solid line. But this time, when if I'm graphing everything that's greater than that function, greater than would be above that vertex, we would be shading above the graph. If it was less than for a negative quadratic, now notice this one, I made it a dashed less than that would be under it, so it would be below the line, which means it'd be down here. 